because we're talking about a system as of right now, even though Trump's been in president, been president for a couple of months now, I guess, um, almost, I guess, not quite, but um, uh, about 50 days or so, I guess, something like that. But anyhow, um, the fact is, is that poverty is still increasing. This thing's got legs, this economic disaster that a lot of people say, what economic disaster? Their numbers have been growing, and they say that's all cool. They don't associate their growing numbers with the lessening of the worth of currency. If whatever commodities they're into in the stock market or that they own, their real estate, they see prices going up, and they say, hey, that's good for me. But they never think of it the other way around, that the dollar is being debased proportionately in a very um, uh, commensurate manner is that, you know, your cost of living goes up and that means that your worth of your currency is going down equally. So, that, you know, this is never pointed out. The mainstream media never tries to educate people, even though these are supposed to be the educators out there, right? These are the cutting edge educators. They're informing us. What else is information? It's contemporary. It's this relevant, pertinent stuff to, you know, today's goings on, today's information, today's education, right? It's all part and parcel. But they don't. They omit so much stuff. And I think half these reporters are brain dead from they don't even realize they're being duped. They're being taken. They just go along because it's a paycheck. Everybody needs a paycheck. Duh. But look at the farm workers out there working hard all their lives and they're poor. I mean, you can't do it. You're not. It's just not true that the, those that work the hardest, you know, you're not going to get ahead necessarily. Especially when you look at the things Max Kaiser is saying, and if you look at uh, minimum wage relative to the cost of gold, go back, say, 50 years, and you go, oh, my God, if it was based on gold, it would be 60-something bucks an hour minimum wage. So, I mean, this, these are mathematical facts that can be proven on paper. So I'm not just pulling stuff out of my ear and talking about it here. This is all true. And this is the reality. This is, this is that steaming pile of maggot-ridden excrement that I talk about that has become of our economy, that Donald Trump says he really inherited a mess, a real mess. And he's got to understand, I'm sure he does, he's plenty smart to know how radical, how controversial, how antithetical it is to these establishmentarians that just want to keep, you know, keep going down this road, keep this trajectory going. Don't worry about the national debt. Just pass, you know, kick the can, pass it on down to a next generation. Just keep debasing our currency in the meantime. And, and it, it, they're happy to just go on like this. And I'm not. And I can't shut up about it. And I've got to try to educate and inform any way I can on my own. If I'm not hearing it from anybody else, I've got to do it. I mean, if I was Alex Jones's friend, I'd be the same guy I am here. And I'd talk to him the same way. That's why I probably wouldn't be good to work for him unless I was going to work in another capacity, maybe as his gardener or something. Handyman, you know, I could do a lot of stuff. So, you know, Man Friday, I could do something like that. But to be one of his reporters and to, you know, to kind of cop, because he's definitely got an opinion. It's the show's opinionated. His reporters know that. And they know, the, you know, where to watch their P's and Q's and and, and, and so it's an unspoken fact that, you know, if you're working for him as a reporter and reporting information and news, you've got to kind of be on the same page, at least roughly. I mean, he doesn't tell, like he says, he doesn't tell his guys what to say and do. But, you know, there's some stuff I just, I, I firmly disagree with him on. But I, I, I respect his heart and I, look, I admire his greatness and his great success at reaching millions upon millions of people all the time. They love him. My only beef is that, you know, I know some of what he does is showmanship. It's just that he doesn't need to. I think to be effective, he needs to be a little less scary so he can be like Winston Churchill and get close to his enemies and try to convince them, try to convince all these communists and socialists in a way that can pull them in and say, look, I don't blame you. I understand what turned you commie and socialist because of crony capitalism. Nothing's happening in a vacuum. So help people to understand. That's all I'm saying here. And there's not enough of that going on. There's not enough people that are willing to help other people to understand. To just say, look, put down my pride. It's not going to help bring us together, help to, to heal this division that has been manufactured by these Satanists, witting or not. But these crony capitalists are bad people, and they're besmirching the name of capitalism, dragging it through the mud. And the only reason I'm a proponent of capitalism is to see it as a means to an end. You understand? I mean, socialism and communism doesn't work. 
the, the, the rich, the ones that can truly afford to pay the bills without even being hurt, they find ways to evade their taxes. We all know that because the wealth exists by virtue of the debt itself. It's like, who do we owe this to? Who are these people that own our debt? And you realize, you know, it's not going to the people, the regular everyday people. It's just creating this wealth disparity. It's just a bunch of thieves and liars and cheaters and murderers at the end of the day. It goes back to these money printing, the infinite errors that could buy up all the earth's goods and services in, 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 in perpetuity. I mean, need I say more? And they need chaos. They need crises to continue. They need the confusion. They need the, cri they need the, <coughs> the war. They need problems. They need social economic ills. They need the crime. Even though it would be much cheaper, dramatically cheaper for society to just say, look, let's just end poverty when it's costing us 50 grand a year to keep somebody that does something stupid because they were economically, financially desperate, okay? It costs 50 grand a year for one person to keep them in jail for a year. And are we going to say, well, because we don't want to be liberal, we say, no, we're not going to help people out. We're not just going to give people money. No, I, yeah, I know it's getting harder and harder. They keep raising the bar and social Darwinianism, economics is in effect. We know we got these social welfare agencies like Section 8 spending $50 billion a year to house people that can't afford housing, yet more and more people are falling through the cracks. It's an abject boondoggle. It's an utter failure. By empirical evidence, you can see that. So I'm not just, you know, this isn't just me uh, uh, making stuff up here. Okay, this is this is evidence that you can look at and you can observe. This is matter of fact I'm talking about. So I just say, well, why don't we be fiscally prudent? If that's conservative, great. I want the best of both worlds. I want to be liberal where it's a good thing and I want to be conservative. Why can't we be? Why does the Democrats have to have a monopoly on, on, on liberalism or the Republicans on, on conservatism? No, people need to be free to think for themselves and realize what a mess we're in and what it's going to take to turn it around. And the first thing is to inform people correctly. Talk about the fact that every time your cost of living goes up, your currency is worth less. It's like a dog chasing its tail. You're never going to catch it. <coughs> we can't make this thing work. It's not just about raising your own personal numbers because you got a good job when we know there's going to be less and less jobs out there. And the vast majority of jobs revolve around the problems in society. Good God, I mean, this is madness. We're all just <coughs> going with this program, and it doesn't make any sense at all. It's illogical. It's insanity. And, you know, we all have to suffer this thing. You know, it's like these people are taking advantage of what happened to us with the original sin, the fall of man, the, you know, this wisdom, the knowledge of good and evil. And instead of they say, oh, you poor people, I mean, you know, you're really struggling. You're all insane a little bit. You know, look at you acting out. You got your carnal nature and you got your spiritual nature and you're always at war and battle with yourselves as individuals. And that's true. <laughs> Believe me, I get my share. I'm a sinner. God knows I need his mercy. I need his grace. I need his forgiveness. And we all do when we admit and we confess and we say, yeah, I would, I would have felt better. I think I would have been happier. My spirit would have you know, felt better and I would have had more joy if I didn't engage in that behavior that I did and, you know, all this stuff, you know, but why did I need to? Why do I feel this need to escape? Whatever it might be. And then you realize money. The money is the obstacle. It's the root of not some of the evil, all of it. And for a lot of the sinful behavior, all this escapism, this need for escapism. But I pointed out very clearly that, you know, we got the social welfare industrial complex, which is massive, and all these people that are employed in it, and if you just ended poverty, at least extreme poverty, where people are literally dying out in the cold and getting diseases and dying in emergency rooms and costing society a lot more, winding up in jail. So you got the crime industrial complex, the criminal industrial. Think of all the people employed in that. All the jailers, think about it. All the attorneys, all the judges, all the clerks in the court system. I mean, it, it, it's incredible right there. And then the dubious war. This is how they start all this. They keep us financially desperate. And then the debt. 25% of Americans are employed in the financial services industry. So do you understand the insanity? This is insanity writ large to the nth degree, up one side and down the other. And how can we not all be getting our share? I mean, we just want to, normal people just want to enjoy their stinking little lives. Am I right? 
But this is what we got to contend with. These monsters that create the policies that we're all forced to live under by virtue of law. And the law doesn't have to make sense. We don't have to be taught about it K through 12 or beyond. You know, you just come out, oh, no, well, this is why you have to follow this law because it's the law. No explanation to say, well, how do you tie it in morally? Well, we could tie some laws in morally. It's wrong to steal. Thou shalt not steal, right? So we could say, yes, there's a moral component to that law. But other laws like uh, controlled substances, you know, what people do with their bodies, and then they say, oh, yeah, well, women can abort their baby right up to the last day and all this, and there's, you know, nothing wrong with cutting it up, baby up, and, you know, and selling the organs. I mean, well, they're just going to go to waste, so we're just being logical here. It's not about money, right? It's about logic. But if you took the money out of that industry, well, what would happen? I mean, these abortionists aren't aborting, you know, uh, for a goodwill, right? There's money involved. And uh, we know that there's a population uh, control thing going on and that, the, you know, rich women generally don't abort their babies. So, again, it's all about the money. So we've got to understand how money ties into everything. Every single problem we have can be traced back to money. Okay, that is very, very important that we understand that fact, you know. And... Um, And deal with it. Deal with it and just understand, look, when you see the light, man, you're 180 degrees. You're what they call based, I guess is a new term contemporarily they're talking about is you're based, man. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm already like in that place that God wants me to be, where he wants all of us to be, a place without money, where we're free. And yes, we can have prosperity. But the thing, the difference is that we're not born beholden. We're born free. And we're born with an understanding that this planet and all its accumulated wealth in terms of technology and infrastructure belongs to every generation. Every existing generation has a right to share in that wealth. And your conscience is the only thing that's going to drive you. It's not because you're afraid because you've got to come up with the money, okay, to pay your bills. No, you serve how you want, when you want, with nobody overseeing you. And where you want, you know. So, you know, people can say that's so radical, you're so liberal. I say, no, no, no. This is a biblical point of view. That's what I'm doing. I'm tapped into the biblical point of view here. Okay? That's all I'm doing. This is what God would want for us. I know it. And I can find corroborating passage after corroborating passage from Scripture tells you this is what it's about. It's about being idealistic. Jesus said it himself. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You can't serve two masters. We've got to get off the junk, and I mean the money. And the only way I know of is by, you know, true capitalism. I mean, this is where I think, you know, people are going to get caught with their pants down. When the Lord comes, you know, and he says, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. It's going to happen all of a sudden, and there's just a lot of people that aren't ready. And it's my job to not be just somebody that sits in a corner and says, I know right from wrong, and I'm just this goody two-shoes guy. No, it says that the blood of those people will be on my hands. All those that I didn't at least try to reach will be on my hands if I don't warn people of what's about to take place here. I don't know when. I'm just saying it's going to take place, and it keeps getting closer and closer. The countdown is on. The hourglass is running out to where this event takes place, where the age ends, where the, the people's riches have rotted, you know, and there's this weeping and wailing of all these establishmentarians that just have, were so invested in worldliness and, and the things of this world, their own personal dynasty and wealth and all this, and didn't realize the big picture, how God wants us to think, you know. So this is why I say, you know, God's going to come and he's going to catch a lot of people with their pants down because they're not ready and they don't know what that means. They don't really know. They're not removed enough. They're not 180 degrees off from the worldly thinking. And that's what I'm trying to convince people to be, is be 180 degrees off and say, I'm willing to lay all my cards on the table and let God's, be will, let God's will be done, whatever that might be. I want it to be done here. And I want peace on earth. I want justice for everybody, not some. I want freedom. I want liberty. I want prosperity. I want security. I want it all. I want to be content. I want my children to be content, their children. I want everybody to have the same thing. I want equality. I'm an egalitarian. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in God and truth and right and justice and mercy and all good things. That light is stronger than, than darkness and that knowledge is stronger than ignorance and confusion and this Babylonian 
world that's been handed to us. This is insane. So how do we get ourselves off the junk? I mean, it's true free market supply and demand capitalism, the only way I know is Adam Smith capitalism. It's just simply, it's, it's VCR capitalism. What happened to the VCR? Okay, your VCR dollars went through the roof. Okay, but still, in order for them to manufacture them and people to sell them, they got to charge something. They got to make something, right? So, you know, the point is, eventually, it could be to where we don't. We don't need it. I mean, ten bucks in your pocket and you're a billion.